we don't really know how to increase IQ. We don't know. There's been, there were all sorts of companies. I, 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 10 years ago, there was a company that was advertising continually these cognitive exercises. Oh, that yeah, I remember those. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't remember the name of the company, but it's vanished. And this happens repeatedly that companies pop up and they say, we have this set of cognitive exercises that will keep your IQ intact and develop it. And then they do the research and they find that if you practice the little exercise, you get way better at it, but it doesn't generalize. And, and that's like, a, you just can't believe how solid a finding that is. People have tried for a very long time. And it's peculiar because what you might think, there is a general, there's a general cognitive ability that's corrected for age, that's IQ. It's very easy to derive an IQ estimate. One of the things you can do, for example, you could take a hundred multiple choice questions about random topics and you could administer them let's say to 100 people and you could rank order them in terms of how many questions you get right and you could correct that for age and that would be IQ that's how easy it is yeah so and so it's very robust phenomenon you might assume that because there's a general if you if you're prone to get one question right you're prone to get all of them right right so there's that general tendency you might think that because there's a general tendency, you could practice a variety of different cognitive tasks and that practice would generalize and it would increase that general ability. Nope. <laughs> that isn't how it works. Now, you can decrease IQ by putting people in informational, informationally poor environments and through malnutrition, through abuse, but there's no evidence that I know of that you can reliably increase IQ with time. I'll, I'll give you an example of this. So there was a huge program in the United States started in the 1960s, which was supported by conservatives and liberals alike called Head Start. And I think Head Start still operates. And the idea was that you could take kids in relatively deprived socioeconomic environments and you could put them in school earlier and in an enriched environment and that would give them a head start and the consequences of that cognitive head start would multiply as they progressed, right? So you get in early, sort things out cognitively, like uh, motivate reading development. The benefits will accrue and multiply across time. The kids will gain a head start. No, that isn't what happened. No, what happened was that the kids who went to Head Start did do better than their age-matched and socioeconomic-matched peers who didn't go to Head Start, but the differences disappeared by grade 5 or grade 6. So there was no improvement in cognitive function. Now, there's a variety of reasons for that, which we won't go into. There were some behavioral improvements. It was likely because some of the kids were taken out of extremely yeah, pathological obviously. families. Right. Less um, abuse. Yeah, yeah, right. That's right, that's right. And girls were less likely to get pregnant who had gone to Head Start in, in adolescence. And the kids in general were more likely to graduate. But there was no improvement in cognitive function. And th that was really saddening right because it was a good hypothesis like the idea that you could get a leap ahead early seems so obvious that you'd think it was incontrovertible it just happens not to be true yeah not to so, get way off kilter here but we know psychedelics improve openness to experience yeah but they haven't seen any changes in cognitive ability do no that? that's also odd well i think it's partly because you can make it look if you have a higher IQ, which means you're faster at processing and you can process more bits of information, so to speak, you can hold more ideas and manipulate them simultaneously. That's part of the element of general cognitive ability. You're faster and you have a, a you can juggle more. Okay. Creativity is positively associated with IQ, but it has an additional element, which is the improbability of the ideational connections you make. So the more creative you are, the bigger the leaps between ideas. Now you can get so creative that you're manic and incoherent, yeah. right? But, and 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 that would be the you're connecting everything. Yeah, exactly. Everything's exactly. connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Um, psychedelics do appear to increase 
that trade openness, that ability to make more distal connections, and also attraction to aesthetic experience, because that's part of openness. But I see, I've seen no evidence whatsoever that they have an, an enhancing effect on intelligence.